Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about a company that's heavily involved in Counter-Strike and I know wants to expand into other esports and that kind of thing. Uh, you'll have heard of them, they're associated with some pretty big brands, especially in the kind of Scandic Nordic region. I'm going to be talking about Rfresh or Refresh, uh, depends um, what sort of uh, pronunciation you want for their branding nightmare but um i've talked about them a lot before uh but they've recently been in the uh press talking about their model the way they do things and how it's going to be a good thing for everybody and um I, i've taken a particular dislike to to, to refresh and i'm, I'm gonna say why uh, first of all the way they sort of clandestinely set everything up uh, they didn't really reveal their involvement with multiple teams until it was kind of impossible to hide it. I'd even contacted them about it saying, look, I'm I'm going to probably do something about this soon. Um, and then just the way that they try and make their involvement see very benign, uh, almost benevolent, that they're just helping players uh, get their own brands and get a foothold on the esports ladder. Well, that's uh, not entirely true, and, and I'm going to show you some stuff over the course of this video. Um, first, I'm going to talk about conflict of interest, which, of course, is my particular area I like to focus on, and no one cares. You know, I keep saying this every video, no one cares. No one cares this is happening in esports, that there are the same few money men being... Uh, you know, sucking up all of the esports assets and creating a hermetically sealed environment that they, you know, completely have dominion over. People don't care, but all they care about are the games. As long as the games go on and there's people to get your pom poms out for, nobody cares about the potential conflict of interest. And I think that's really sad. I think that's a very dangerous road to be heading down, and, and we're certainly well on our way at the moment in getting into very dangerous territory. Uh, so, anyway, let's, uh, let's get into the first part of this video and that is the refresh model and this was a blog post that was made in march and uh you know a few journalists kind of picked up on it hltv kind of uh, did a news post about it and you know i i, I fully uh understand if people didn't want to get um you know all up in arms about it or whatever but let's just read it to you so this is basically the kind of modus operandi of, of refresh this is how we operate this is what our model is and it says refresh entertainment is establishing developing and facilitating a number of professional csgo teams in selected markets elevating the teams and players while building their brands are key elements in the refresh model. We work with teams to build their brand and enhance the performance of the individual players and teams by providing and developing best practices to improve their skills, mental resilience, stamina, and teamwork through psychological, physical training, optimal facilities, and a pro-athlete lifestyle, including rest, nutrition, and the mental toolbox. You know, so far, so good. This just sounds like you're a training group, you know? The refresh model consists of several steps for the players, for the team, and for the brand, including but not limited to mapping the team's position and potential, establishing the individual player's sporting training needs, building, strengthening the org, as well as establishing, supporting, and developing the brand, enabling each team and player to concentrate on what they do best, play and perform. Creating a winning franchise and brand under the refresh model always depends on the team's individual requirements and needs. No one team or one individual player is the same, and while always based upon the same building stones and elements, the refresh model is designed to assist and improve the player and team on the individual premises, characters, and identity. Refresh Entertainment also provides all aspects of commercial management, including sponsorships, commercial partnerships, and team player branding through proactive PR and media activities. In short, we invest heavily in supporting the teams and individual players in any and all ways thinkable in order to optimize their sporting performance and commercial value. Now, what this is effectively is a sales pitch. Uh, this is saying to potential teams, you know, look, look at all these wonderful things we do for you. We'll get you training. We will help you build a brand. We will handle all of the minutiae of running a team so you don't have to. And then it just comes in at the end and we'll take care of all that tricky commercial management for you. Now, I know a lot of pro players and one of the things they said they're terrified about and don't really know what to do is sponsorships. They said they have no idea how to go about it. And if you think about it, why would a pro player really know how to do those things? You know, they spend all their time practicing. They go to these events. Um... 
that they're kind of uh you know kind of cattled if you like from one team to another they very rarely have uh, dominion over their own futures and I'm talking about high-level players I've had this conversation with and they're like what I could make my own team I could approach a sponsor and I'm like dude sponsors want to sponsor you they don't care about the fucking generic logo and stupid name that comes with an esports team they want to sponsor the nikos of this world the shoxes of this world the guardians of this world the symbol of this world the devices of this world that's what they want now this sales pitch is particularly enticing if you were a new and upcoming team. You'd want to buy into Refresh because obviously they've done all this for Astralis and Astralis have gone on to become the best team in the world. So understand that this part of the model, yeah, I, even I can see the benefits of it. But benefits and conflicts of interest can obviously sometimes go hand in hand, right? That's why this next part is especially problematic. Multiple team co-ownership. The refresh model is designed to build, develop, and establish viable professional sports teams and brands over a 36-month period. Now, 36 months, three years, it's a long time, very long time in esports. Uh, provided an agreement can be found with the teams and orgs during the establishment and development phase, refresh might take part ownership of one or more of the teams to secure that the refresh model is fully incorporated into the team strategy. So in other words, if we need to run the team, that's in the refresh model, in the refresh system, we will just run it. So when we claim to be a completely benign and benevolent media group, we're telling fibs, we're lying, because we can just seize ownership whenever we want to make sure that uh, the team is run optimally to our um, specifications. Under the refresh model, the players have a minority share in the team. And let's be clear, they're not joking when they say minority share. It's a very small amount. The players in all of these refresh teams are made shareholders. They have a very small amount of shares. You know, you've seen all of these reports. Oh, refresh, it's brilliant. They've made the players co-owners. They just own a very small amount of shares. It's, it, you know, it's like if you work for a big company and they give you shares when you sign your contract. You know, having shares in Amazon doesn't make me a co-owner in, in Amazon in any way, shape or form. I'm a shareholder. And that's what these players are. They are shareholders, not co-owners. Uh, thereby the players will also benefit from the financial success and or sale of the team and yes of course again when you're a shareholder if a company gets sold and you have shares in it you get the percentage that's appropriate for your amount of shares uh, in the sale value unless of course it's a fire sale as we saw with certain other brands and sometimes shares don't have to be honored in certain legal circumstances completely uh, different topic there we do not see a conflict in multiple team ownership under this model I mean, how? How can you not see that? Just let that sink in. We have this model where teams are signed to this one company for 36 months. We can intervene anytime we want. Um, we, we have financial interests commingling across multiple teams. But in this model, we don't see any conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest in the clearest sense. And I can't believe that um, you know Nikolai Nyholm, this uh, you know incredibly successful businessman, doesn't understand a conflict of interest uh, when one is presented. We do not see a conflict in multiple team ownership under this model, as each team is and will be its own entity. However, when the teams and brands are fully established, Refresh will no longer have a controlling share or ownership of the teams, brands, or orgs. Now, one presumes. Established means at the end of the 36-month period, uh, at which point they'll be looking to sell. So, I mean, you know, otherwise it's all been for nothing, right? I mean, you, you'll have made some profit in the short term. The launch and establishment investment period is similar or partly similar to uh, e.g. MLS, Formula One, and other franchise-like setups, and as such, fully dependent upon strong individual teams contending on their own terms to reach specific goals, establishing in cooperation between the teams orgs and refresh now again they're absolutely right in terms of the model yes it's very similar to mls or a formula one franchise or whatever difference being you don't have one group of money men controlling all franchises that's explicitly prohibited in in most sports around the world actually uh, for the reasons of conflict of interest and even when you can own a share in multiple teams competing in the same league it's usually so small you have to have such a small percentage like no more than 10 percent, for example in 
um, Premier League soccer, I believe. It, it's irrelevant. You you would get a seat at the table, but that would be it. You would never be a, a big decision maker. And this is to stop things like match fixing. This is to stop people taking a dive in competitions and setting things up, which is vitally important to protect any model that would encourage such behavior, even if such behavior would never happen, has to be stopped for the integrity of esports. Uh, anyway, so it talks about goals and KPIs and stuff. Good news. So there you have it, right? So that's what they're saying is the refresh model. Now, there was a recent report as well over at uh, Yahoo Esports by Zorin T or Tay. Um, and this was just talking about refresh and, you know, how they started. Uh, and again, talks about Nikola Nyholm um, and how he made his money by being involved with um, Minecraft and, you know, other sort of apps and startups and whatnot. Uh, and again, it, it just hints at some things. It's so disingenuous the way it's presented, as you're going to see, because there's a big reveal coming at the end of this video. Uh, towards the end of this video i'm just gonna bring this up for you guys because again this is this is what i mean this is why i can't get on board with this so csgo agency representing astralis heroic godsend and norse hopes to build better players launch new tournaments and expand to china and i told you this was coming uh, go back and look at my other videos about refresh they want to start a tournament this is why they hired graham pitts you know messioso he is a guy with tournament expertise and he is going to be uh, handling whatever league or tournament, uh, you know, kind of circuit they want to run. And here's the problem with that. Now you control the teams and you control the league they compete in. Now we've got all kinds of uh, clusterfuckery going on. And uh, for some reason this keeps refreshing. Uh, this is going to be very irritating. But anyway, you can see here, he says he has, Nicola Nyholm, the guy who started all of this, have a very indirect relationship with Astralis. I still have the Sunstone Venture Fund. It works at any venture fund. I'm no longer a general partner at Sunstone. Uh, and, but I do have a very tiny ownership in that fund. So I have an indirect interest there. And he says he's got no stake of ownership, but he doesn't rule out the possibility of acquiring them at a later date i'll just quickly skip back into this uh what we've also stated pretty clearly is that we certainly see this as an option in a development phase it might make sense for us to take ownership but that really has to do more with our ability to invest large amounts of money in teams and team development that the teams would not be able to do on their own and in that case we want to see some sort of financial return for that directive so again this is about profit this is about financial control and profit um anyway you you know you can read this whole article uh, you know, again, uh, I'll, I'll just quickly read this conflict of interest part. Uh, while a single as organization associating with multiple eSport teams is by no means new, Refresh's model is peculiar in that all the teams exist as separate entities competing directly against one each other, one another. Uh, the agency has set up practice areas and play lounges for all the teams. This is their little, uh, you know, area that they have things in and while the team share select resources some services are exclusive to each to prevent possible conflicts of interest so it says you know they've got their own staff of sensitive positions the spot psychologist won't work across multiple teams well again look dude this is i mean that's fine no one was crying conflict of interest when Weldon Green was working for pretty much every team. No one was crying conflict of interest when, you know, over in League of Legends. No one was crying conflict of interest when, like, two or three esports lawyers were handling all of the business of all the LCS teams. You know, the problem isn't the staff that you utilize because they have a kind of moral obligation and ethical obligation, many times a legal obligation in, in the case of lawyers, to not share information. They can't do it. So, uh, it, very bizarre, like, oh, but the sports psychologist won't work. The one we hire for Astralis won't work for God's sense. So no conflict of interest there. It's about the fucking money, dude. It's about the money, right? Now, um, I've said this, like, this is being presented so disingenuously to the public about how oh, there's no conflict of interest here. I'm going to show you, we managed to acquire uh, one of the um, agreements that's been sent out and we got this from multiple people so i know this is genuine um it, you know it's not fake uh it was sent to several people um and uh, you know while i've got no doubt that this has probably been updated uh now or, or, or maybe uh, certain elements have been tweaked depending on the team and their own personal negotiations this was pretty much the base agreement 
you had to uh, take on board if you wanted to be in the refresh system. So I'm gonna, I, I've taken some, um, you know, kind of uh, clips from each of this, and I'm gonna show you why this is a conflict of interest, uh, be, and, and actually what they're saying about being quite benign and hardly involved at all is a complete uh, fabrication. Okay, so here's the first component of the refresh agreement. And what it says here is that refresh will provide the team a monthly funding amount of this to cover the salary and basic operations of the team. Um, so what this basically means is that, you know, they're funding the team, they're covering all the salaries, salaries for the coach, salaries for the players. And I guess most people assumed this was obvious, right? Like I, I think most people would just, yeah, of course they're funding them. But again, if you're doing this across multiple teams, if you're doing this for every team that's in your system, you are paying the salary, then obviously for that, you know, for that service, if you want to call it that, th these are your employees, you're paying them the salary. So, I mean, that right there uh, should be cause for concern. Uh, it says as well, funding of operations and other costs held by refresh are offset in the various profit sharing agreements as defined below. And funding of operations will be paid monthly in arrears starting on the last day of each month. For them this, so that they've got a they've got a payment agreement with all of these teams. Uh, then, of course, you've got uh, here under the segment that they call back office. Refresh will provide all back office functions to the team and the players, and this includes salary payments, travel arrangements, tournaments and leagues, legal advice, bookkeeping and accounting, and anything else which is not caught the daily work of the players or coach. Player owners will be taking in mandatory board meetings every three months to evaluate the state of the company at which Refresh will provide all necessary paperwork, financial reports, and legal counsel. And this is across all teams in the Refresh system. So, you know, while Nicola Naiho might be out there saying, oh, you know, I, I don't have a direct ownership or financial interest. Yeah, but Refresh clearly do. You, you're present at all of the board meetings every three months with the players for each brand. You're providing all of these services. You're paying all the money. Then you've got here, uh, the, you know, the, the act is uh, a pl the player agent. Okay? So think about this. You know, you, you pay the salary. You pay the money. You're telling everyone you're a media group. All right? But then let's just look at this for, for the player agency section. Should a player be kicked or choose to leave the team, Refresh will represent such player in negotiations with a new team. Uh, the team and the individual player must always notify Refresh if they are approached by other teams. Players can terminate the representation by Refresh with a seven-month notice period. So, you sign in to an agreement for 36 months. You get kicked from a team. Now, Refresh handle all of your negotiations for seven months minimum. And doesn't this just colour everything? You know, you think about the Glaive transfer and everything else that's been going on. And certainly I've been told in the background, you know, that these players are told it's certainly going to be a lot easier for you to move between teams that are owned by, or rather, uh, have a media agreement with Refresh. Um, you know, and, and, and when they've had offers from other teams. So, again, I'll just, I'll just spell it out so people don't think I'm crazy, what I'm saying. You're a player, you've sent it into a 36-month agreement, you can't terminate that agreement, even if you kick from a team for seven months, and for seven months, Refresh will represent you. Well, because they're going out and representing you, they can pretty much uh, facilitate where you go. Now, you can certainly dig your heels in, but for seven months, these people represent you. So if they come and go, oh, we've got you this great deal, and it just so happens to be in another Refresh team, obviously you're going to go, because you just want to play Counter-Strike. You don't want to sit on the sidelines for seven months. So again, how is this not a conflict of interest? They can any talent that's within the refresh group, they can push and funnel into the, exclusively within the refresh group. You never get out. You've got to, not unless you're willing to fuck up seven months of your career to do it, just to make that you know principle. And of course, obviously, when you go to another refresh team, you're going to be signing another agreement, and on it goes, right? On the cycle goes. So uh, that's the player agency uh, segment there. All right, now let's also have a look at uh, media rights. So media rights, because that's what they ostensibly claim to be. They say they're a media uh, company. Refresh is granted a non-exclusive right to all video and streaming being produced by the players in their personal streaming. This means that players are free to stream on platforms like Twitch or Facebook and put content on YouTube and independently make money on this, yet Refresh must be provided a pipe into all public video content being produced and a right to use this content commercially. Refresh is granted an exclusive commercial right to all content pertaining to the team. 
So, again, your content that you create, sure, it's yours, you independently decide to create it, Refresh can use it for any ex commercial means, any means that they want, and you've agreed to that. You can't stop them doing that. Um, so, again, that's across all Refresh teams. Sponsorships, next. Refresh sales team will proactively handle sales of sponsorships for the team. Sponsorships will encompass not only jerseys and other clothing, clothing, but also sponsorships around events, custom products, etc. Refresh holds the right sleeve of the jersey, sweatshirts and jackets to display its own logo. So in this agreement, you're always advertising Refresh. Uh, Refresh can't use this space for other advertising. Sponsorship revenue, offset salaries, and other costs by Refresh calling revenue share. Blah, blah, blah. So they handle all sponsorships for all teams uh, in, the, in the Refresh group. You know, and that's fine, I suppose. Maybe, you know, I've seen models like this out there, you know, uh, in r real sports. But again, this is, this is complete, this is the, co this is controlling the stuff that matters. Yet you're out there saying, no, we're, we're, we're fucking, we're fine, we're chill, dude. What the fuck are you worried about? Content production. Refresh will provide a studio for video production, facilities and staff to create content for branding of the team and possibly in conjunction with sponsor or partnership agreements. This content can be behind the scenes, frag movies, blah, 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 blah. Refresh and a community manager will manage Twitch, YouTube and other relevant social media channels together and all branding decisions, including use of names, colors and logos, must be made by the team and refresh together. So again, this, this gives them... Uh, dominion over what you do, want to do with your team. So players are the owners, but nah, Refresh have to have a, uh, a say in this decision. They handle this for your, all your social media. And again, might look great when you get an Audi. Might be slightly annoying when, you know, some company that's given them a fucking manila envelope behind closed doors, and, you know, you're not getting much out of it, and you thought you owned the team, but nah, guess what? You're fucking going to be advertising for them now because Refresh said so. Right, next. This is uh, this is where it starts to get interesting. So, I mean, if you, if you, you should have found this interesting. Uh, I fucking hope so. But this is where it gets really interesting. Write your first refusal. So keep in mind the end goal of the refresh model as I see it, and I've looked at more paperwork and talked to more people involved, is they bring in players as shareholders, refresh handles all of the business ends, they build up the brand, and then eventually they're going to look to sell within that three-year period or at the end of it, and everybody gets a profit and they walk away. It's uh, that's how they want to handle it, um, unless of course people want to double down because it's been so successful and they're making more profit. But it says here, refresh holds a so-called right of first refusal. Refusal should the team be sold as a company or as a roster. So that's three or more players counts as a roster. That means that if the team receives a binding offer to be acquired, refresh has thirty days to match the offer or provide an alternative buyer at the same price and terms. So again, just want this to sink in. You're the players, you're the alleged owners. <sighs> Excuse me, right? You're the alleged owners. Uh, you want to sell. Someone comes to you privately and says, hey, this is a great team, a great brand. We'd love to buy you, actually. Here's all this money. And you go, yep, sounds great to me. You still have to go cap in hand to Refresh and say, hey, uh, they, we really like to sell to this brand over here. And Refresh goes, no, 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 no. Uh, actually, they're a competitor. They're a competitor to our interests. So we've got 30 days to find someone else. And they find somebody who might be friendly to them, somebody who might be a bit more in bed with them, somebody who can do them a favor down the line. And they get the same money in the same terms. And they come back to you and they go, look, you're selling to these guys. And you go, well, no, I definitely want to sell to this guy. Well, fuck it, you can't. Sorry. You are just but small shareholders. So they even have this uh, dominion in that regard, you know? So again, these these are conflicts of interest. Uh, I, I don't know what else to tell you. The revenue share. This, these numbers are great. The principle for revenue share is to let Refresh recoup the guaranteed operating costs to provide... Uh, the team while sharing upside from there. Different revenue streams have different revenue sharing percentages, and this, we're going to show you what they are. Revenue share will be paid out quarterly, but recoup calculations are continuous across quarters and financial calendar years, which means that if recouped revenue share is ahead of costs, this positive balance is transferred to the next quarter calendar year and vice versa. 
So, uh, here it is. For prize money, refresh. This is before they've recouped the costs, and then anything after that is it. So, they take 10% of prize money for every team, uh, every brand under refresh. This looks a lot like ownership, doesn't it? Not media group. Well, why What? Why is the prize money? Oh, you handle all the operating costs, so you want the prize money to, to offset it. Okay. And the team will get 100%, but only after refresh of recoup their money. Same for stickers, right? Which stays permanently even after they've recouped themselves. So your brand, uh, they're still going to take 10% of that. Uh, then you can see here... Um, Media rights, so the team gets 10% uh, of media rights. That's money made through media rights sales. Uh, but Refresh get 90%, and that's the same even after they recoup. Right? Sponsorships, 10% of sponsorship money goes into the team. Refresh take 90% before they've recouped the operating costs. Then after the operating costs have been recouped, it's 50-50. It's Merchandise. Same agreement, 10% uh, to the team, 90% to refresh while they wait to recoup the costs and then 50-50. So this idea, right, that refresh aren't these, um, you know, kind of sugar daddies, if you like, for all of these teams, propping them up, having almost like complete dominion, really, over what they do. Like, basically, the players get to sit around the table and say, this is what we think. But ultimately, it's Refresh that are going to make the judgment calls, are going to make the decisions. It's Refresh that are going to choose who your sponsors are. It's Refresh they are going to take the bulk of the money of those sponsorships until operating costs have been recouped. And sure, then they only take 50%. But this is ownership by any other name. This isn't a media service. And it's being presented as such. And it's a lie. Now, I have huge problems with the prospect of any one group or individual being able to, because they have business interests across multiple teams, being able to say to a team, look, if you, quali you qualify for this league, uh, or, okay, let let's have a, let's have a, you know, outlandish situation. Two teams in a league. A lucrative league, a league where there's lots of money for it. The last game in that league, Matt, right? The last fixture is for a team that's already in the league and will be there next season to play a team that's facing relegation. The team facing relegation must win. Must win to stay in the league. They're both controlled by the same business. Are you honestly telling me that that individual, that corporation, that entity doesn't tell the other team, look, it's a meaningless match for you guys, if you don't want to try so hard, no, no, no. Right, well now we've got huge conflicts of interest. Conflicts of interest that affect the core integrity of everything we're building in esports because of shared business interests. And while WISA is trying to identify this problem, people are just saying, well, we just won't be involved in WISA then. We won't be involved in ESL. Because there is no universal condemnation of this model. Tournament organizers will not adopt these rules. And even if they did, these teams, these organizations like Refresh will just create their own tournaments. Where the conflicts of interest can be sealed within and everybody makes money. So, uh, I, you know, I, I hope this has been enlightening for people. I hope people are as, uh, you know perplexed by this as i am why this is just being accepted as something that's par for the course in esports which it isn't it's not par for the course at all uh, this isn't ordinary this isn't what it should be the refresh model isn't the model that we need within esports moving forward Anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Can't wait for the backlash on this one. Uh, can't wait for the people, oh, that's an old, that's out of date. We've changed it. You're lying. Eh. It's all coming. Happens every fucking time. But I know the people in this channel and the people who follow my work, they know what I'm about. Don't believe the bullshit. Anyway, all right, take care. I'll see you on the next vid.